if you're planning on cloning an army, you better make sure that they're a chip off the old block. So a couple of years ago, in a response to uh, the prevalence of print and play games, I had put together a video talking about how you could assemble your own print and play maps and counters. And with the counters, uh, we had talked about using like a double-sided uh, half-inch uh, tape for that. Um, the nice thing about that was, of course, it's pretty simple. All the counters are going to be uh, uniform in size and that they're, they're half an inch. They can't be more or less than that. Um, the downside with this particular method is it's very unforgiving. <laughs> um, so once your piece of paper uh, that you printed out for your counter hits this tape, it's, it's pretty much stuck. Um, so you have to make sure that everything is perfect when you're assembling it. Um, what I've been using uh, subsequently for uh, putting together print and play games since then is something called chipboard. So chipboard is a heavy duty kind of uh, cardboard. It's um, just about the right, almost exactly the same size as our counters. It has the same weight. So when you make your counters, they'll feel almost identical to it. Um, and so in the rest of this video, I'll talk about um, how you can go ahead and use chipboard to assemble your own print and play games. Now, the chipboard material, uh, this particular one is eight and a half by 11, so it's the same size as a regular standard American piece of paper. Um, what I like about it is it's, it's stiff and it's about the same width as a regular counter. So if you're looking at it here, here's a standard cardboard counter. It's just about the same width. Um, so that makes it ideal for making a plug and you know, print and play um, type of game. Now the uh, next step in the process is now that we've got our counters copied um, and printed out and for, for this particular one I used like a glossy photo paper. I had it done at the local office supply store, so it cost about, I think, 70 cents to have it printed. Um, you would then use uh, glue to affix it. I usually use just a simple kind of, um, you know, clear glue stick type of thing. Um, it works really well. It doesn't leave a lot of residue and it tends to dry pretty quickly. Um, so that's what I use to attach the uh, paper. You can use a thicker glue if you want to, or a spray-on glue. Um, in the past, I've also used uh, like an adhesive glue like this. Um, one of these kind of spray-on ones will work well, but that's a little bit of an overkill um, for what we're doing. Once you're done gluing it, you'll have something like this. You'll have your counter sheet glued on to the chipboard just like this. Now what you're going to do is cut these into smaller strips. So the uh, chipboard is pretty thick and um, cutting it into uh, strips you're going to need a uh, heavy pair of scissors, heavy duty pair of scissors or maybe um, one of these kind of um, uh, cutting board uh, kind of paper cutters um, will have, uh, obviously this is going to be easier if you've got a paper cutter kind of a thing, um, but heavy duty scissors are going to be helpful. Um, and once you've cut these into strips, then you've got them, uh, there's no back on them, okay? So you'll then cut the uh, paper the back side, which isn't mounted to anything, you'll cut that into strips like this, and then you can affix them to 
to the back side of the uh, cardboard. So here we are, we're just going to use our uh, paper glue here and apply glue uh, fairly evenly uh, along this piece. And then we're going to take the back side. You want to make sure you have the correct back side for the set of counters that you're gluing it on. And then you're just going to affix it and make sure that everything is lined up everywhere. Okay, and then as you saw, I had a couple of old encyclopedias. Just kind of press this between the encyclopedia and let it dry. When you're done, you should have uh, something like this, where you've got the uh, faces of the counters there and the back sides are there. And then the last thing you need to do is just cut the uh, counters into each of their unit segments. Now the last little thing you might need to do is just trim away if there's any excess paper that's maybe hanging over from the other side. And then if you'd like to have your counters clipped, you can do that using your handy dandy counter clipper. Um, obviously I can have my counters clipped on the old fashioned. Um, but then here you have a really nice looking counter. It's, uh, it's all set ready to play. Now, as a point of comparison, here is a real Marshall Enterprise um, printed counter, front and back. And here is one of our own handmade ones. So, really hard you know using that that glossy photo paper uh, goes a long way towards mimicking the uh, look of a regular counter now as a matter of comparison um, this was an early test run that I did just printing out the counters on uh, using my laser uh, jet printer um, just on regular paper. And then here is a set that's done using that glossy photo paper. Um, so I think the colors came through a lot better using the uh, photo paper. And then the finish has that smooth finish. This is a little rougher. Um, and then this has a little bit of that sheen to it, which is typical for the actual counters from the manufacturer. So um, I kind of like it. Um, and then you can see if we're looking at the uh, thickness, here's our real counter from a Labatai game. And here's our produced one. It's the, it has the same feel and it has the same thickness that we're used to. So that's the advantages of chipboard. It's a little bit uh, of work. Um, but I really like the product, the, the end product is really uh, matches uh, what you get when you uh, get it from, uh, from the publisher. So there you have it. Hey everybody, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it to be helpful. Uh, if you'd like to hit that like button. And if you have suggestions on print and play games, uh, maybe different techniques that you've done or different materials you've used, please feel free to make note of that in the comment section and share that with other interested people. Um, and until the next time, be well.